So what's up guys, I'm back and I'm back with some content. I know pretty unbelievable looking at my recent uploads, which are big empty bubbles of me talking about nothing for hours, but no, not today. Today, this video is full of content. So what is this video about? As you know, we are all digital photographers, basically a games character with a camera inside of Blender taking realistic photos. At least that's what we're trying to do. And it's pretty hard to do actually using a non-realistic camera. Why is this camera non-realistic? As you know, a camera has aperture, shutter speed, ISO, white balance, basic stuff, basic industry standard stuff covering all cameras. This is like basic stuff. There's really almost no exceptions to this, except for some reason, Blender is a huge exception. Blender has something called an f-stop, which is correlated to an aperture, but if you change the f-stop, it won't be changing the exposure. Big issue. If you want to change the motion blur and you're working with a cinematographer and he says, just do a one one hundredth uh, shutter speed, have fun translating that in a slider from zero to two inside of motion blur, which doesn't mean much. And also changing motion blur, so shutter speed, should also be changing your exposure, which it doesn't in Blender. And if you want to change ISO, which is quite important if you have multiple cameras that maybe have multiple ISO settings, you have to head over to the global exposure setting and maybe keyframe it or something and change the exposure, which also isn't following industry standard numbers like ISO. And it's also not per camera. So, so many annoying stuff. If you want to set up an anamorphic lens, have fun. Uh, and if you're already at this point Googling how big a crop sensor is in millimeters, you're for sure watching the right video because the standard blender is super annoying to translate camera to digital camera, but it should be, it should just follow industry standard rules and Blender doesn't, but there is a solution for this problem. That's what this video is about. Uh, there is an add on called the photographer add on that solves all of these problems. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm not going to go super deep, but basically is show you that it exists, what it's about. So let's stop wasting time. Let's stop talking again for hours and jump into Blender. So see you there. So we are inside Blender. I have a car setup. Surprise, surprise. I've never had a car setup before. Today I do. I know. Unbelievable. It's a Supra. Very, very fresh, but that's not what it's about. So the add on is already installed. Uh, once installed, you'll find it here. I assume most of you will be able to install a add on to Blender. Once you install it, it should pop up right here. First, we're going to do is add a camera. You could use Shift A, blah, 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 but a bit annoying bit cooler in the add-on. If you click add camera, it adds it to where you're looking at. So like it adds it where you would expect it to be added. So a little gimmick that I liked right off the bat, you can use lock camera to view, you know, this feature, but here it's right in your face and not hidden. Next is the sensor or camera. There are some presets like the Sony a seven, which I use on a daily basis. So it's cool to work with the camera. I know best, but you can also do some custom settings here. Another feature that I love is the exposure feature. There is first auto, which is pretty cool. So if you do like animations, especially ArcVis, auto is going to be fun to use. But also if you know, uh, auto is only used by noobs, just like the auto noob in CSGO. So never use auto if you don't have to. We're going to go to manual. And wow, here you have it. Real industry standard settings for a camera, which should be default blender, but aren't. And best part about it is if you change the f-stop, it actually changes the exposure stuff that should happen on default. And also another great part is effect motion blur. That means that the shutter speed will affect the motion blur. So now finally you can set up a realistic camera without doing crazy math to find the correct random numbers that control motion blur. Now you can work with real numbers. Also, wow, what is this white balance? I've never heard of that. You should have heard of it because it's super, super basic and missing in Blender for some reason. Of course you can do white balance in Blender, but not just like this. Um, and also pretty cool. You've got this color picker, uh, just like you would know it from Lightroom to set kind of like a, yeah, I guess auto white balance, you could call it. It's not really auto, but you know what I mean. So also super, super cool. Uh, also a very cool feature resolution. 
there's default stuff for the Alexa cinema cameras, Alexa 4K, just default stuff. You can easily change between portrait and landscape. Not crazy, but a little cool thing that I also liked. Um, I skipped some parts. Um, lens, um, you won't see because depth of field is off, but there's an anamorphic ratio slider for anamorphic bouquets in the background to have this cinema style look, which is quite annoying to make in Blender and also should be, and also should be just as easy as these settings, but aren't. So <laughs> next, depth of field. Um, you have optical vignetting, which is also missing in Blender. And wow, you have bokeh textures. Very, very cool because if anyone ever looked at an actual photo, bokehs are never perfect circles or maybe perfect circles, but not perfectly colored. Here you have color fringing or chromatic aberrations in the bokehs. Here you have a little dust in the bokehs. This is pretty much what, uh, what my camera looks like one-to-one -one, since I never cleaned my camera and the famous onion bokehs all right here. Very, very cool. Um, and yeah, like pretty much a must have for any realistic render, to be honest, um, under focus. So you see our focus is, uh, quite off. Um, there's an easy way of setting up focus just like this. Um, there is autofocus and a standard focus and you can just pick it right here. Yes. You could add a 3d cursor and add it here and everything annoying but this is way easier. You can even show your focus plane, which is pretty cool. Also for animation, you can easily see what's focused, what's not focused, stuff like that. If you look a little bit deeper, deeper into the add-on, you'll find some other pretty cool features. Um, what have I missed? Uh, render queue is pretty cool um, because, oops, uh, wait one second. I'm clicking too fast. Uh, the render queue, you can render all cameras. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is not a default feature in Blender. I always keyframe the cameras with control B onto the timeline. Uh, here you can just bump out all cameras. Also setting, I don't know why it doesn't exist. There it is. Um, the light mixer, I personally don't use much, but for ArcVis, this would be very, very cool because um, the multiple lights can be controlled all in one place. So if you have uh, two lights here, you can easily change the lights right here next to each other. You can easily turn them on and off, basic stuff. And also you can work with Kelvin. And as you maybe know, working with Kelvin is pretty much mandatory when setting up lights. So there you have it, beautiful Kelvin stuff. You could do this with a black body. Yes, you could do all of this kind of, but not just in one place. So I was very, 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 very impressed by this add-on. Uh, actually someone on Discord, uh, Gregory, uh, recommended it to me to check it out. So here it is. I checked it out. It's awesome. I wish this was a default blender thing. I don't know why it's not default blender and why blender is making all this crazy weird settings that don't make any sense. Uh, so yeah, there you have it. A realistic physical based, physical, correct camera to render realistic renders. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something. I hope I showed you something you didn't already know about. Um, otherwise, if you want, you can head over to my Instagram because I want to have some live videos in the future. Uh, why not do them on YouTube? Because on Instagram, I can talk to you guys, like have like a split screen and talk to you guys. I really want to do that in the future because um, YouTube is just a little limited. I don't know. I just kind of wanted to mix it up. But also, if you go to my Instagram, of course, you're going to see my life from a different angle, not just from the YouTube angle. So feel free to head over and come by and see you there. And otherwise, see you next week and goodbye.